Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're doing a bit of an experiment. What happens if you put all the gods in standard into one deck? Well, we're about to find out. The Pantheon features all 12 gods in standard, which is pretty thematic, as it corresponds to the 12 Olympian gods. In white we have Heliot, Sun Crowned, with the demigod Daxos. And then for more of the Spark we also have God Eternal Oketra. In blue we have Thassa Deep Dwelling with her demigod and God Eternal Kefnet. Then in black we have Erebos Bleak Hearted with Timurit Chosen from Death and then a God Eternal Bontu. Then in red we have Perforos Bronze Blooded with Anax and Ilharg the Race Boar. And in green we have Nylea Keen Eyed with Renata and God Eternal Ronas. And then we also have two multicolor gods, Athreos Shroud Veiled and Colossus God of Destiny. And then to tie the deck together we also have four copies of Altar of the Pantheon which will help with uh, mana fixing and the ramp and can also gain a bit of life if we control a god or demigod and also adds one devotion of every color which is useful for turning our Thiros gods into actual creatures. And then four copies of Icon of Ancestry which can help us dig for our gods. Sadly can't find demigods if we name god with Icon of Ancestry but uh, still a way for us to assemble the entire Pantheon and then also gives our gods plus one plus one. And then we've got some more ramp and fixing with Elysian Caryatids and Paradise Druid. And then moving on to the mana base, we have one of each basic land alongside four copies of Fabled Passage to search them up. And then we have each shock land and most of the temples as well, just not all of them, since otherwise we would end up with a couple too many lands in the deck. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. I guess I can cast a couple spells here. If the Karatid survives, then we can play Clothus. We're not too far from Kefnet. If Karatid dies, we're in trouble. Turn to a Johnny's Pride Mates, alright. I guess I want to play as many different colors as possible here. Cloth is not doing a whole lot yet. I guess we can play Kefnet here, which can at least block the Pride Mates. And next turn, maybe play Nylea. So the character does make two mana now. So I could technically play Athreos. I think I'm just gonna go Nylea plus play a temple. All right, it's a lot of Angels of Vitality. Those are going to be scary. Play Timurets. Play Athreos. Put a counter on Kefnet in case it somehow dies, although White is usually going to exile it or deal with it some other way. Well, so far Kefnet is doing a good job on defense. We're not playing any instants or sorceries, so the ability on Kefnet is not too useful. Let's use Nylea, see if we can find something. Icon of Ancestry, I think I want to keep that on top. Play Clothus. And where do we put a counter? Timurit, maybe. P 
going on sends in everyone. Moment of heroism, fair enough. Alright, worth four. But we do get Timurid back. And we can uh, gain some life here. Probably should have actually exiled the moment since Timurid can exile the creatures to gain us life. But I'm gonna be spending my mana on Icon. Name God. That's a miss. Can still activate Nylea, but I'm gonna keep Carroted back as a blocker just in case. Put a counter on Timurat. Sarah's Guardian, <laughs> alright. Do we see any attacks? Do we want another icon? Not really. An altar of the Pantheon here would uh, be quite decent. Spin the wheel with icon. That's a miss. Nailia finds Bontu. Alright. It's not bad. And then do I want to play Paradise Druids or activate Nailia some more? I guess I'm fine playing the Paradise Root for now. That also brings us one step closer to turning these into creatures. Sends everyone. Alright, we fall to four. Bunch of creatures come back. So we're still alive. Probably start with... Hmm, could play Bontu, draw some cards. Don't really want to sacrifice a lot of stuff. I guess I can sack Timurets, since it has a counter from Athreos anyway. Perforos can give stuff haste. Um, don't think we're attacking yet though. Uh, maybe we are. Play Perforos. Carry it, it has haste. So can tap for two mana right away. And gods turn into creatures. Love to see it. And then Nylea. Clothus. And Bontu can attack. And we'll put a counter on Kefnets. Can still activate Timurat or Nylea end of turn. Timurat could gain us one life. Opponent sends everyone. So... This goes here, and then I guess I can chump the Pride Mates. Opponents doesn't have any reaction. I guess we'll use Nylea then. Probably should have used uh, Icon of Ancestry there now that I think about it instead of uh, using uh, Nylea since 
probably have a better chance of finding something good. Alright, it's gonna be a meter golem. Taking out Paradise Roots, or a green devotion has fallen. I think I'll temple first. Can maybe help set up our draw. I can misses. Can still use Nylea, but that's not too useful. So I'm just gonna pass. Put counter on. I guess Bontu. If Gefnet somehow gets answered, we can still gain life with Timurat. Angelic rewards, giving the Pride Mates plus three and flying. Alright, so we're not actually dead on board yet. Thanks to Timurat. So we're taking four. Kefnet comes back. And there's our altar. It's a good pickup. Get rid of Icon. Turns on Athreos. Spin the wheel on Icon. That misses. I guess I can spin the wheel on Nylea. Find Ronos. Alright. Might as well attack with the ground creatures. Put counter on Kefnet. Still have a Timurat activation at the ready here. GG's, and yeah, Ponon knows about Ronas, which is gonna come down next turn and end the game. Well, how to have an interesting game against a starter deck. Here you are, play 5-color Pantheon, and you'll have a good time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Uh, yeah, this seems fine. Could even play a Timurat on Curve if I wanted to. Probably gonna go with the Carrotid instead. Uh oh, this kind of looks like a real deck. Do I want Athreos? It's got some synergy with Bontu. Yeah, sure, why not? Turn to Risen Reef. Uh-oh, untapped land. Cavalier of Thorns. Triggers Risen Reef. 5-6 is pretty big. Can eventually trade with Aronos. Bontu can block it. But we'll take a hit for one turn here. Timurat can at least gain some life if they put some creatures in the graveyard. And yeah, there's Uro, Hydroid Crisis. So Timurat could get rid of Uro here if I want to pay two life. But then I might be unable to 
play my other cards on curve, although now Blood Crypt means I get to uh, play a 5 drop on curve. Now I don't have to exile Ura right away since they only have 4 cards in Graveyard, but that could change if they have another Cavalier. Yeah, I guess I'll take the 2 damage. Agent of Treachery. That's a problem. It's gonna steal my land. Take five. Get rid of Uro and Crisis. So this turn we'll just play a Scryland. Perforos doesn't do a whole lot. Well, hopefully they're on empty, but they still have Castle Ventress to help them scry. Nissa's pretty good. And another Cavalier. Alright, I guess Timurat will have some more food. Take eight. And we'll get rid of Risen Reef and Leafkin. Thassa Deep Dwelling. For now we'll probably just play Bontu, which can block uh, Cavalier. And what color to get? I guess island, so we have double blue. Timurat up to four toughness. Can block a Nissa land. Although we should be dead on board if they turn a the land into a 3-3 three -three and attack with all. Alright, they figured it out. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Hope that the character survives since we'll need it for fixing. Clothus. Could be okay, we've got a lot of red and green devotion. But I also need to keep lands on top. I think it's probably good enough. It does a similar thing to Timurat in exiling the graveyard. Ooh, a mill deck? A self mill deck. Well, Clothus should be good in this matchup. Definitely against blue-green, where there's lots of Uros being played. A lucky Clover. So this is the Underworld's Breach deck.
So I could get rid of a land, but I think we need to deal with Uro. And then I still get to play Okatra here, I think. Fetching an island. We're not increasing our devotion for Clothus, but we can start making 4-4s. Four Brazen Borrower is going to be pretty devastating with Clover in play, but there's already a couple in the graveyard. Also want to start exiling the Rose Thorn Acolytes, so that the Breach becomes less effective. They might have it in hand and they're debating whether or not they want to go for it. It's going to be another Emery. They should have kept the original one in case they milled Clover, so they could have played it out of the graveyard. Clothus gets rid of Acolytes. And what's the play? I kind of like the combo of Boar plus Ronos next turn. So let's start there. And once we get Timurid in play, we can also start exiling more stuff out of the graveyard, which of course is pretty good in this matchup. Samuel Pluses, naming a Lucky Clover. And what do we want to exile? Probably a Merfolk Secret Keeper. Put Ronas in play. And that should do it. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat the Teamer Adventure Breach deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And... Got a pretty green devotion looking hand. Altar of the Pantheon. Don't know if I need it. Up against the blue black mill. So, opponent's getting busy milling. Good time for Ronos, I guess. Maybe fetch before... Oh, I guess the plains is in my graveyard already. So can't fetch that anymore. Maybe I should even avoid fetching since that gets uh, one card out of my library. So a little bit closer to dying to uh, decking here, but... Uh, Probably gonna see a chump on Renata. The life gain from Heliod not too relevant. But can maybe add some counters. Opponent draws four. So I can go Icon plus Heliod. Probably naming God here.
Uh, Renata down. Clothus could be nice. I guess I'll scry and then activate Icon since they're gonna mess up the top of my library anyway. It's a swing and a miss. Not too far from Clothis turning into a creature. Ooh, Ashok. Well, that punishes me for uh, playing out my hand. Didn't necessarily expect Ashok to make an appearance. Let's get rid of Sweet Oblivion. And drown secrets. My kin are and another Ashok. Alright, so the milling's gonna go pretty quickly now. Graveyard is gone. We can get rid of Ender God Eternals in case they get it back with the land. And then Altar means I can gain one life at instant speeds. So might as well go face. Gonna see a trump from the token. Twenty-five cards left, twenty-three now. Another Enter God Eternal, so not enough to kill the Paradise Root. Lost a bunch more gods. Down to 13 cards, yeah. Don't think this is happening, they also gain 4. Erebos doesn't do a whole lot for me. Probably better off using Icon. Can play Perforos. I force them to chump if I attack, but I guess if they want to mill me, they could just attack next turn too. And then this can bounce something. This mills me for another four. I mean, technically, if they don't have any cards left in hand, we get another turn here. So down to five. Ashok gonna bounce the Druids. 
Uh, I guess Druid's more useful in case we need it for Devotion than Erebos. And not Ashok, that should just do it here. GG's. Yeah, we got surprisingly close, had a very good start, but then that uh, Ashok definitely put a wrench in our plans. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and um, I guess we've got a keeper. We've got our two signature artifacts. And that's why we lead with a green temple, so we could maybe play a turn to carry it or paradise root. Don't quite have the turn three Kefnuts since we're missing blue mana. Maybe up against a black white life gain deck. Probably don't need Steam Vents anymore. I can just play Oketra next turn. And hope it doesn't get removed. Icon pretty synergistic with the War of the Spark Gods since we can put them back and then find them with Icon. So Ketra second from the top. So I can go Icon name Gods, find Ketra, or I could this turn play Kefnet to stem the bleeding and then next turn I could still make that play. Could also activate it on upkeep if it was the top card. So blocking witness means they get a life linker, which synergizes with their other cards. But I guess that's fine. Take my draw step, and then we will icon, and then we can play Okatra right away. And now we just need to find more gods to add to the pantheon here. Well, that's one way of finding more gods, is my opponent killing them. Can first strike kill the lifelinkers so they don't gain any life. Can almost start attacking with Okatra. Gonna leave it back for one turn. Alright, Heliots. Seems good. So, yeah, let's attack. Should be able to outrace 
their deck now. I guess I'll end up making this trade for the Enforcer at some point. Now important interaction to point out between Double Strike and uh, Lifelink is if I kill the creature with First Strike damage with Lifelink, then the normal damage won't go through, so I only gain 4 here. Uh, but I guess getting 4 here or 4 there doesn't matter. I guess I could have uh, activated Altar for one more plus one counter with Heliot somewhere. Heliot plus Altar are quite synergistic too. Probably put it on the flyer. Ooh, Ronos. That's a nice one. I could maybe use this first. Let's make the carry to stronger. End of turn can still activate Icon. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. Alright, so we got to see our 5-color Pantheon deck in action. Definitely noticed the discrepancy in power level between the War of the Spark gods and the Theros gods, just because we don't have a ton of devotion outside of maybe green to turn our uh, gods into creatures. But the War of the Spark gods, especially Oketra, did a ton of work, but that's no surprise if you played that limited format. So that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.